Hello, good morning and welcome. Hesslisville Common, Liebertusha to Winterberg in Germany. Sunday morning and it is skeleton day on what hopefully will be a relatively dry, if slightly foggy day here in the Hochsauerland in Germany. First weekend of the European campaign. It's the third race of the BMW IBSF World Cup competition. Well, we start our action on this Winterberg track with the men's skeleton. And this track, very well known to almost everybody, uh, particularly for European sliders, Winterberg is one where young sliders are brought to be taught because it's not demanding in terms of huge pressure or dangerous corners, but it does demand subtlety, demands good, strong start as well. Alexander Chechikov, the Russian rocket, no surprise, he is the start record holder. Got to lie down quietly into corner zero, then into corner one. Corner zero was added as a little kink when the brand new start house was built. First big turn is corner two. You can easily make mistakes here into the Omega corner three. And uphill from into corner four, if you skid there, your time just dies. You start to drop three stories in turn five, picking up speed past the coach's favorite waffle stand, and then down into the Chrysler. 270 degrees, one pressure, two pressures, and almost a third on the exit. Really tricky exit, and you need to get it right. And particularly here in corner nine as well, don't hang up too high because then the crossover into 10 and 11 is difficult. And then from 11, down through the labyrinth, 12, 13 and then the final corner, corner 14 and 15. Two pressures here, the second part is very much uphill. You saw our uh, toboggan there sliding up on the wall on the exit, trying to keep the speed alive. Track record holder is Martin Stukurs. And last year in the race here, for the very first time in 13 years, there was not a Dukurs on the podium. Alexander Chechikov is our World Cup points leader. He had a great campaign in North America, third in the first race in Lake Placid, then he won the second. Axel Junk, the local hero here, he won the season opener and he will be a force to be reckoned with, took the silver medal behind Chechikov last year. Well, there's Martin Stukurs. Since 2006, only four men have won on this track and three of them are still competing. Chechikov there, Dukurs, and Sunbin Jung of Korea. Axel Jung has not won, though he has taken silver medals a couple of times in the last three or four seasons here. And Nikita Chegobov, well, we can expect him to be a quick starter, but this track has never really favoured him. He's never been among the medals. Thomas Dukors has, and a few others. Frank Rommel has taken a couple of medals here. Sergei Chudinov, John Montgomery, Mika Halilovic. But the only winner on this track since 2006 not competing still is Florian Grassel. Well, we have 30 sleds in our field. They'll be cut to the fastest 20 for heat two. And Mikai Pakianu of Romania will be the first off. Now, it was going to be an interesting story because he was actually scheduled to push in the bobsleigh for the Romanian foreman yesterday. In the end, the team was scratched, so he's not doing double duty. Ronald Alderset joins the World Cup Tour again here in Europe. He'll be our 30th and final slider off. Race three of the BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Cup and Miki Pakianu of Romania, the 20-year-old former hurdler, gets life underway. His Bob Julian is the bobsleigh coach for the team. This is his fourth World Cup. Has not done a World Cup race here before, but like all the other Europeans, knows the track well. Nice and quiet after a 5.13 start. Over the brow in corner four, no skids. Looking neat and tidy so far. Well, for many of the athletes, probably outside the top 10 in the regular World Cup rankings, the pressure is on to make the second heat. And that is going to be very difficult. This is a field packed with good sliders, young and experienced. Another nice looking run, shaping up here from Pakianyu. Now if he can make it into the field, that'll be a huge result for him. 58-1-6 is the slide, so what is going to be the cutoff mark? It's going to be very tough to tell, I think, until we're 25 sleds in, maybe. 55-5-1 is the track record, so we're two and a half seconds away from that. Part of that will be the athlete, part of that will be the slightly frosty, misty track conditions. 
Take a look at the start. Good technique, single-handed like everybody. Crosses over and trying to swan dive on there. Land with the chest, driving the sled forward. Nice and straight out of Spurs. Has to take a little toe steer there. So Mihai sets the field in motion. 29 sleds to come. Second of whom is Alex Hansen, finished in 20th place in the race here last November. This is his 19th World Cup. Again, he has to take a little steer, gets a lot of corner zero. 5.06 though, that's one of Hansen's big advantages. He is a hugely fast starter. Start record is a 4.75. We will probably see a couple under five seconds here, but not many. And Hansen's got lots of mass on his side as well. That means you push a lighter sled because it's the weight of the sled and the athlete together which needs to be as close to maximum as possible. The lighter you are, the heavier your sled needs to be for sliding. But of course, that means it's heavier to push away from a standing start as well. So the bigger framed athletes, the taller guys who naturally carry more mass, tend to have lighter sleds at the start and that helps with the push. Not a bad looking run from Hansen. Through the final corner, and he's gonna be comfortably ahead of Pakyanyu, six tenths up, 57.54. And that might be a top 20 run. Big thumbs up from Kristen Bromley, the coach. Good morning to Shelley Rudman, I'm sure, back home, watching the season with interest and still pondering how she's going to be able to get a World Cup slot to return for Samaritz. Not this year, before that rumour starts. Keep trying to start it, but it's not happening yet. Too many cases to look after, too much work to do. Good load from Hansen. But again, you see that spur on the left-hand groove. The right-handers are using that left-hand groove. It's just starting to ease the sled a little sideways. Well, this is a track that always produces really, really tight racing. A hundredth of a second can be a big difference here. Let's see what Andrew Blaser of the USA can produce. Made his World Cup debut in Lake Placid, home advantage for the first two races of the championship, which is a very rare thing. And then his third World Cup here, the 30-year-old from Boise, uh, Boise, Idaho, has not raced here in his life, and that's going to make it really tough to make the field. 5-0-7, good start, just a hundredth off Hansen, but already a little drift away from corner zero to corner one. Climb up the hill here, over the brow, from corner four there. Very easy to skid down to five. Everybody seems to have good control here this morning. Weather in training was different every day. It was damp, it was hot and sunny, it was misty. And so it's very hard to predict what the ice is going to do from day to day. 12 hundredths of a second ahead of Alex Hansen. You feel that this is definitely going to be a battle to get in. Oh, and he's very, very late in the labyrinth. Head right up, shoulders up as well. That's going to slow him dramatically. And that, I'm afraid, is the end of his hopes of making the cut. Real shame for Andrew Blaser. Head in hands, but... You know, the subtleties of this track are um, are always waiting to catch out the unwary. Down in the labyrinth, if you get a little late off nine into 10, then 11 is a bit of a headache. Tuffy Latour gives him a smile. Well, listen, a field of 30 in your first World Cup race here, your first race of any kind here, it's always gonna be a tough call. And the labyrinth, it just comes at you so fast. Little late in, then gets pushed away, and that means late height. Flops off, you can see he's just hanging onto the sled there. The athlete really gets thrown around. And you're skidding sideways there, he's just trying to hang onto the sled. Now he tries to get the steering back. But uh, shame for Andrew Blaser. So, Sumbin Young of Korea, third here last year. His 42nd World Cup start for the Olympic champion. Gets a lot of corner zero. See him steering away hard with the shoulder there. It's not a dramatic skid, but it is putting effort into the ice. And the less you steer, the faster the sled builds speed. Four tenths up though, and a 4.87. That's a huge getaway from Sun Bin Young. 
Jun started the season with a back injury in the weightlifting gym before they started sliding in Lake Placid. Looks like he has definitely worked that out of the system. 8,500s up. And this should get us down towards the 55s at the bottom of the run. Nice control into the labyrinth. 129.6 down at the bottom of the track. That's 80 and a half miles an hour. And a 56.36. There's Richard Bromley on the right who builds the sleds and helps with the coaching for Jun. And that was a good run. And Jun, the winner here two years ago. One win, one bronze medal in three races here. Bronze last year, the winner two years ago. And his starting is so efficient, but even he looked look, head and body banana shape there as he steers the sled away from corner zero. Down here, nice height, allows the pressure to take him up in 11 and controls the dive off into 12. Axel Young, lots of orange t-shirts and lots of noise here. Man from Dresden, this is not his local track, Altenburg is, but lots of fans traveling here to watch him anyway. Silver medalist here last year, silver medalist here in the 2015-16 season as well. And Axel, 28 years old, two World Cup wins, including the season opener in Lake Placid. Now he steers away again from corner zero, gets a little less of it than Jun, and just avoids the wall. Desperate to keep the toes off the ice. 4.98, giving away 11 hundreds of a second to Sumbin Jung, a Korea. And all of that extra velocity that the Korean had will take time to unwind. Down into the Kreisel, it's 270 degree corner. There's the first pressure, there's the second. The third comes right on the end, but he drove it off nicely. 36 hundreds back though. This is a long way adrift of Sun Bin Yun. Now how much can he limit the damage? He saw his knees part there, his heels apart. It was a, a bit of a control steer in the labyrinth. 34 hundreds back to 27 hundreds back. And that might mean that he is out of the reckoning for the medals here though. He shakes his head. He is going to need some superhuman effort in the second run to try and get himself back into medal contention. A part of the issue with the weather changing every day is you have to gamble and guess on what the weather conditions are going to be, what the track conditions are going to be, and choose your runners accordingly. He got a little nudged away as they bounce out to the end of that groove. And here in turn 11, allowing the height to rise. He's already starting to tilt the head, though, to just mitigate that high line. Not at all happy. All the fans in the orange shirts, I'm afraid, are not going to see an Axel Junk medal here today. Well, next up is Alexander Tretyakov, the Russian rocket, the start record holder with a 4.75. That dates back to 2014, wearing the yellow vest of our World Cup points leader. 4.92 is his start. And he gives away 500s to Yun. Tretikov, a winner here back in the 2006-2007 season. Beat Miki Halilovic and Martins Dukurs. And those two, Dukurs and Tretikov, have been at it on this track for the last 13 seasons. Martins has the advantage with nine wins. In 10 years, Tretikov won in 2006-07, won last year. This is a wild ride, though, from Alex. This is not looking like a medal-contending run. If he does from 4,800s back, then everybody else has got to have a shocker. I'm not sure he's going to be on the podium. Missed out on a medal two years ago when Jun beat Martin Stukors and Dave Kresh Cheshin of Canada. He took the bronze three years ago, silver four years ago, and five years ago. It's a rare podium that doesn't have Tretikov and Dukors both on it. I think we're going to get one of those today. 
Early height, early pressure. And he has to fight it on the exit. And again, gets bumped away, 11 into 12. Well, not a top draw effort from Axel Jung, not a top draw effort from Alex Tretikoff either. Now, what can the young Wunderkind do, Felix Keisinger? This is only the seventh World Cup start for Felix. He was eighth here last year, our reigning junior world champion. Third in race two at Lake Placid a couple of weeks ago, his first ever World Cup medal. Can he double up on that and get on the podium here? 4.97, that's a good start. That's one of the reasons that he's so strong in this German lineup. But can he carry the speed down the track? Starts at 10th behind Sumbin Yun. And again, that gap grows. Yun accelerating electrically out of the blocks. Gaps out to 1800s. 2300 sexting the Kreisel. Or entering the Kreisel, rather. And the gap continues to grow. He's got to stop losing time. Just about has, but he's a quarter second back. This is the second fastest run of the competition at the moment. Ooh, a little late in 11, but controls it nicely into 12. Is he steering too much? Late flop at the exit there. And he's still going to be three tenths back at the line. 56-65. Well, it was a better looking run than Axel Junk, but 56-63 uh, for Junk, 56-65 for Felix Keisinger. Well, Keisinger, his home track is Koenigsee in Bavaria. He's happy with the start, 497. And Keisinger only in his seventh World Cup race. Young soldier from Bavaria, again, allows the pressure to take him right up in 11. Not panic steering, he got a great exit into corner 12. Just a hundredth behind his teammate. Lots of Russian noise at the top of the track now for Yevgeny Rukoshuev, our youth Olympic champion in boys skeleton from 2016. 20th here in his race appearance, his only race appearance in the World Cup, and that was January 2017. This is only his sixth World Cup race. Two of the previous five were in Lake Placid. So Rukoshwev starting 5-14. The Russians cycling around the third World Cup spot. Tretikov and Tregubov pretty much nailed in because of their performances and their experience now really helping them against the younger sliders. But a lot of the other Russians, depending on their current form, will be in or out of the World Cup squad. How that helps concentration or not, I don't know, but obviously they need to get the fastest slider on the ice in the World Cup to get the most points they can. And Rukoshev at the moment in Sixth position of our eight sliders so far, so ahead of Andrew Plaza of the USA. 57 to 7. Will a 57 slide make the heat? Well, he's fifth at the moment, ahead of Alex Hanning Hansen. So we'll wait and see. But he's half a second shy of Alexander Chechikov, his teammate. Got knocked away there. And that makes the transitions very difficult if you get pushed offline and you have to steer hard to try and get the take onto the corner that you want. Well, relatively happy, the 20 year old Russian. Next up, Alexander Gassner for Germany, 30 year old from Winterberg. Sixth here last year. This is his 34th World Cup. Gassner has been in and out of the World Cup squad on a number of occasions. Born in Romania, he was a biathlete until he turned to the ice tracks at the age of 15. Five zero seven. So giving away two tenths to leader Sumbin Yuna Korea. The battle here is with teammates Axel Jung and Felix Keisinger. They currently lie second and third. So if he's within three tenths at the bottom, then he will be right in with them, but he's three tenths back at the moment. 
cannot afford to lose any further time now. Both of them had uh, little problems in the labyrinth. Nice looking Kreisel. So now, good exit off corner nine. And then 11, the exit there, nice and clean, crossover into 12, little bump off 13, 2800's back, he's right in between Keisinger and Junken at the line, he's second ahead of both of them. There you go, it's the battle within the battle, the race within the race, and uh, Alexander Kastner is the best of the three Germans. There's a very strong chance we'll get a German 1-2-3 in the women's race, not a great chance for German 1-2-3 in a men's competition, but Gassner leads the German trio at the moment. A little more than he would have liked of corner zero, then just got eased away from the wall by the filleting, the little rounded corners of the ice. Here in 11, no panic, no big steer there either. Look, he had the line right. You didn't even see the head waver. That's a smooth looking run from Alexander Gassner. Okay, now we get into very familiar territory. Thomas Dukos, the older of the two Dukos brothers, in his 121st World Cup start. 38-year-old from Segulda. Started age 16, he's had 28 medals in his World Cup campaign. His World Cup debut here, as his brothers was, was in 2004. And he was 31st in the field. Tells you how big the skeleton field was in those days. Starts 5.08. Just seen Alexander Gassner go second quickest off a of 5.07. A lot, lot of that turn coming down into the Kreisel. That puts him in late, but he gets it out nicely. Out of corner nine, one of the key elements to set you up for the labyrinth. Nice looking crossover as well. Good looking run, but he's seven tenths back. Lot to think about here for Thomas and Martins to cause. As ever, you suspect that they've been uh, trying different solutions to the same problem on their two sleds. The two work together as if they're two halves of the same brain. And Thomas Ducours, nothing empirically really disastrous about that. Eight fastest start, drives himself into sixth, but seven tenths away. Thomas Ducours will not be on the podium this weekend. Last medal for him here was a silver three years ago. Another one of those family one-twos. In fact, they've only had two Ducours family one-twos here in World Cup racing. The Dukos brothers, when they first started sliding, didn't know that you could change the rock and the bow of the runners. And so for a whole year, they never did. Sunbin Young leads from Alexander Gassner and Axel Young. Our first 10 of 30 sleds down. Martis Dukos of Latvia, 11th of 30 starters. Race three of the BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Cup. We're in Winterberg in Germany. Martin Haven watching the action with you. A 4.92 getaway for Dukurs. Leader is Sunbin Young, who blasted out of the blocks with a 4.87 and a near flawless run. Only 500 slower, Dukurs. But he's got to stop losing time immediately. He's a nine time winner in 13 years of World Cup racing on this track. In fact, he's been racing here for 15 seasons. Don't have all the results, though, to hand. IBSF database only goes back to 2006, so the early stuff you have to forage through ancient bits of paper for. 1700s back, this is the second fastest run we've seen so far. But he needs to close on Yun, or it's going to be a runaway for the Korean. Tries to keep a low line at the end to save a hundredth or two. 56-6. 2400s back. That is a huge margin to try and overtake. Now, if the weather changes before the end of the second heat, then it's possible that Yun's runner choice might go away from him and Dukas may come to him. But win, lose or draw, 
Martins will be just as magnanimous. Still at 35 years of, of age, one of the fastest starters of a sled on the planet. It's often hard to try and find a little error. That was a tiny late exit, late exit here as well. So he has to have a little fraction of an uh, adjust of his weight on the sled. Martins Tuko second, Sumbin Young still our leader. Next up for Russia, Nikita Chegobov, fourth place here, just out of the medals last year. Chegobov in his 35th World Cup start, compared to 120 for Martins Dukurs. Chegobov still just 24 years old. 5.01 getaway, thought he might be cracking the fours. Silver medalist in the Pyeongchang Olympic Games, Chegobov, 3,800s back already. Well, 1,400s from the start. You think only 2,800s by the Kreisel, but he's six tenths away. So this is all the indicators pointing to a disastrously incorrect runner choice or choice of rock. How much you set the runner bow to, it's rounded at the bottom like a, a rocking chair, and how small the contact patch is can make a huge difference to the amount of friction you're generating. And that is a horror story. 1.1 away, that's a disaster. We may not see Nikita Tregobov in the second heat. He is behind Yevgeny Rukoshev, his rookie teammate, and some way behind Alexander Trechikov. He's six tenths slower than Alex. It wasn't about the start. There were no disasters, no near crashes. And if you look at a sled and it doesn't seem to be doing anything particularly wrong, right, he got a little bit more of corner zero and a rub. But if he's not doing any major errors and losing that time, then it's the runners. 13th of our 30 sleds, Marcus Wyatt of Great Britain. Marcus, the 27-year-old born in Exeter, now lives in Bristol. 15th World Cup start for him. He was 10th here in the race last year. If he can manage that again in a packed field of 30, that will be a big result. A former wide receiver. I wonder if he was up late last night watching the NFL playoffs or whether he will be maybe this evening. 497 getaway. That's a great start for Marcus. 10th here last year. His best in the World Cup was a fifth position in Calgary last season. So 10th behind at the start, 4,500s back already. And he's losing time the way that Tregubov did. Does that mean that suddenly something has changed in the atmosphere and the track is now a lot stickier, a lot more grippy to the runners. It still looks pretty polished on the running surface. Hasn't got that matte frosting yet, but six tenths back. He was the fourth fastest starter, and this is going to be seventh or eighth ahead of Rokoschwef. No, just ahead of Thomas Ducours for seventh by a couple of hundreds. Light racing cars on a tyre, runners on a sled. The only contact you have with the playing surface are absolutely critical. And if you guess the wrong runner setup or the uh, wrong runner material, they're all made of uh, slightly different steels to and slightly different cuts and rounding, slightly different knives on the back to give you more or less control. So much of it is down to personal taste, but so much of it is also trying to second guess what works best with the weather. Looks. Nicely settled in corner 11. And seventh place at the moment. We're right in the heart of all the talent in the field as we get to our 14th starter in his 14th World Cup race. This is Gung Wang Chang of China, 24 years old. His World Cup best ever, still seventh place on his debut in Lake Placid in 2017. He's not matched that yet. 13th in the Olympic Games in Pyeongchang now, and of course in two years next month we head to Beijing for the next Winter Olympic Games. And this young Chinese hopeful 
First met him in the World Championships in Koenigsegg, and then started his World Cup career the following season. 14th fastest start of 14 sliders. He's got this really long, rangy frame, which should be so good for Skeleton. But he needs speed at the start. He's picked up one place. He's ahead of Mikai Pakianu at the moment. With this run, he's going to struggle to make the top 20. Gung dives for the line, 10th place, 57-33. Good. That might be enough. Certainly recovered a little later in the run, didn't he? You saw Andy Schmidt there, who uh, left the British programme a couple of years ago and has joined Willy Schneider in coaching these Chinese athletes into their home games in a couple of years. Well, look at the Kreisel. There's the first pressure. Trying to hold it and stop it dropping down too low. Pushes him up a little on the exit, though. Big height at the end and just flops off the corner. Nihao. 14 sliders down and 16 still to come in our packed field. Kim Jisoo of Korea's ninth World Cup start. He has not raced here in World Cup. Only raced here once before in the Intercontinental Cup. That's the second tier of sliding. That was back in 2018. So he's gonna have to dig deep into his memory banks. 491's a good getaway for Kim. His teammate, Sun Bin Yun, still the race leader. Kim, very inexperienced in terms of World Cup races, only his ninth start, but he was in sixth place in the Olympic Games in his home track in Pyeongchang. And his World Cup best result, seventh place in the Eagles, the track at Innsbruck, and that's a real gliders track, and if he can produce a top 10 run there, then he can definitely do the same here. This is the second fastest starter, and he is currently still in second place. And from this, you can tell two things. He's got a lot more potential than he's been able to show so far. And that man on the right, Richard Bromley, has got the sled set up and the runner choice is absolutely spot on. It's a Korean 1-2. So Min Young leads and Kim Ji Soo in second place. No wonder he's got a big smile on his face. Well, this might be potentially the day where he gets his first World Cup medal. Big height in 11, but he didn't let it worry him. No panic on the exit. Great run from both Koreans. Well, that really throws the gauntlet down. Next up in his 10th World Cup start, Austin Florian, 25-year-old from Southington, Connecticut. He'll be joining me to call a women's race, hot off the heels of his men's competition. 19th place here last year. His first World Cup race in Winterberg. His best so far, ninth place in Altenburg, like Lake Placid, where he learned to drive when he was still in college a real driver's track, and that's where we go for the World Championships at the end of the season, of course. 508 getaway is close to a top 10 start. So let's see where he can position himself. We've already seen Andrew Glasser come down 1.49 seconds away. Glasser's not gonna make the second heat, I don't think. But uh, Austin Florian at the moment might just do that 13th fastest. This has him now just behind Alex Hansen of Norway and in a real danger zone. If you're not in the top 12, then there's so many other athletes coming up, you may be in trouble. 14, 57, 5, 7. Will 57 and a half be enough to get in? Caleb Smith is coach. Not sure that he's the world's happiest man. Austin Florian goes a long way up the outrun. Too busy beating himself up. Now, earlier in the week, track was so much slow that they were 
stopping before the end of the outrun. So 5.08 start, pretty decent. He's ahead of Andrew Blasser by 2,800s. And we will find out in a few sleds time whether that is enough to make the field. All right, you've got to give it your best on the day. And if it's good enough, it is. And if it isn't, it isn't. Sumin Young, Juicy Krim, and Martins Ducours, your top three. So 16 sleds down, 14 to go. Only four places left in the race. What about Korea's Sung Ji Jung? His third World Cup made his debut in Lake Placid before Christmas. He's raced previously in the North America's Cup, Intercontinental Cup, and also raced in the World Championships in Whistler last season. Started 4.93, that's a top five start. And if they have got his runner choice as correct as Kim Ji Su and Sun Bin Yun, then suddenly we could have a Korean top three. Fifth fastest start. He's in sixth on the splits. He's not making this look quite as straightforward as his two teammates. He's the least experienced of the trio. This could well be a top 10 run. Eighth place on the splits at the moment. This is a really good run for Jung of Korea, and he's in 10th place. 57-11. Richard Bromley joined there by Katsuhiro Koshi, the Japanese slider who was sliding back in the 90s and into this century. He's helping these guys fine up their driving techniques. Skid off corner zero. He was skidding onto it and had to kind of Little toast here there to sort things out. Late exit off the Chrysler, late height. And if it looks awkward, it's usually not helping you. Not a bad run though, top 10. Our 18th slider is Yan Wengang of China, his seventh World Cup start. The 22-year-old is from Taichin, which is Beijing's major port city. He lives around 50 kilometers from the northern city that is China's capital. Raced here in the Intercontinental Cup, 5.01. That's on the money, that's a top 10 start. We just saw his teammate Kung Wang Chang go 12th fastest off a 5.18, which is still the slowest start in the competition. So Yan has a real chance to improve on that. Ninth fastest start, he's in 10th place at the moment. So he is matching Thomas Ducours of Latvia. A little late exit there again. That's going to cost him a couple of hundreds. Toe steer there, you heard the chin and the toes both dragging on the ice. Still a top 10 run though. This could be ahead of Jung of Korea. 128.9, good speed, 80.1 miles an hour. And rolls it almost across the finish line to go eight, 57.05. That is good, Andy. 57.05 for him. And what was uh, Wang Chen Kang? 57.33, so 27 hundreds, 28 hundreds quicker than his teammate. It's a really good run into eighth place. He's 21 hundreds behind Alexander Tretikov of Russia in seventh, but still, that's a really good run. Little too much pressure, perhaps, being allowed to come into play in the cries. Also, you get that little late exit and a flop off. Nearly rolls it off the final corner but carries the speed, and that's the critical thing. There's no friction if you're in the air. Our 19th slider in a field of 30, Vladislav Hereskevich, the 20-year-old from the Ukraine, his 18th World Cup start. Finished 17th in the race here last year. His World Cup best, a pair of ninth-placed finishes in Calgary, Canada, a real dry, uh, glider's track. And Segulda in Latvia, a real driver's track, and he pops the groove. Just avoids the wall into turn one, but I'm afraid that is probably his race over. 
Well, the single-handed start is always just a little bit fraught with disaster. It's a much quicker way of running than having both hands on the handles and running from behind, which they did in the early days. Now's the sliders to be more upright, have more of a sprinter style, and therefore generate more speed. But very occasionally, they run slightly out of line and just push the sled and it pops out of the grooves. The grooves are cut from bobsleigh, so they're only wide enough, the skeleton sled only wide enough to have one runner in the groove, not two. And Vlad losing all of that speed at the start. Empirically not a bad run, 17th, he's ahead of Andrew Blasa and Mihai Pakianyu. I don't think a 57, 68 is going to make the race. If he does, in a field of 30, having popped the groove, then that will be remarkable. You saw his dad, Mickey, a uh, former World's Strongest Man competitor. There's his sister helping out as well. Pushes the sled out of the spur. His hand is not on the runner that's in the groove it's on the if you like unrestrained runner and just getting out of line pushes it sideways just a chop with his toes to try and uh, straighten it up there you go tough break not a great sunday in the office 20th slider jerry rice for great britain a 29 year old from high wickham will complete the field in his 17th world cup start Best here, 15th place last year. And the five flats, that's a good start. That puts him inside the top 10. World Cup best is a ninth place result in Eagles in last year's race. So he knows how to get speed on these subtle gliders tracks. But he's gone from 1300s back at the start to 3400s back. A top 10 run here would definitely be a big step up from uh, Jerry Rice. And Jerry taking his place in the World Cup squad because Don Parsons, the Olympic bronze medalist from Pyeongchang, uh, announced, having come back in Lake Placid at Christmas time, that he was retiring from the sport. So, Dom, if you're watching, you'll probably be watching the women's race later. Uh, enjoy your retirement and a bit of time off. Across the line, 57-5-1, 15th place. Well, that might be enough to get him in the race. He's 300 ahead of Alex Hansen, 600 ahead of Austin Florian. 57 and a half, is that what we're going to say is the cutoff point? Maybe. So Jerry Rice, 20th slider in a field of 30, and he is 15th out of the 20. And that is still a little in the danger zone. Picks the shoulder up there, big steer correcting. 10 sleds to go, and everybody now has to bump somebody out of the race to make it in. Coach Caleb Smith holds the sled for Alex Ivanov, or Ivanov of the USA. Third World Cup start for the 32-year-old from Concord, Massachusetts. Now lives in New Hampshire, a little closer to Lake Placid. Former decathlete and soccer goalie. Maybe the first soccer goalie that we've had, I think. Had a few strikers. They tend to be the uh, quick-legged boys. 5-12 start, 17th in a field of 21 sliders so far. So like Andrew Blasa, relatively inexperienced on the ice here in Winterberg. Six practice runs in training over three days and different weather conditions for each of them. More questions and answers, you would think. 17th fastest start. He's in 18th at the moment. In the danger zone is Mikai Pakianu of Romania. Oh, head up from even off. 20th place at the moment. It's him or the Romanian. Who's in, who's out? He's in for the moment, and the Romanian is out. So Andrew Blaser, 19th. Alex Ivanov, 20th. Two US sliders on the bubble with nine sleds still to go. Dangerous times. There's Coach Tuffy Latour.
Trying to keep his head buried in turn 11. Trust the feeling he's getting. They talk about the feeling, the pressures on these sleds. That's the G-forces pushing on you, working on the sled. So at the moment, Ivanov is in and Pakianyu is out. 22nd of our sliders in his 11th World Cup race is 23-year-old Manuel Schwerzer of Italy. Didn't make the cut here last year. The man from the Sud Tyrol changed from Luge to Skeleton five seasons ago. And in 11 World Cup starts, or 10 previous, he has made the cut just once in Altenburg last season. And in a bumper field here in Winterberg, that might make life a little tough. 5.07, 13th fastest start. That didn't have great exit velocity. And he is down to 19th position at the moment. Good form in the Kreisel, good exit, and that will help him keep the speed alive if he can get nicely down into the labyrinth. Here we go. If he can keep this on track out of 11, he could well make it into the race. You saw a big shoulder lift there, lots of counter steering going on, and he's out. 21st on the splits, and ducks his head at the line to take 20th place. He's in momentarily. And Alex Ivanov of the USA is out. Manuel Schwetzer, 100th behind Andrew Blaser. So 57 8 6. Doesn't look like he feels he set the world on fire with that one either. Not a bad start, 13th fastest start. So at the moment, Manuel Schwerzer is in. Next up, another of the Austrian sliding dynasty. This is Sammy Meyer, youngest brother of Benny. Hello, Benny and Elizabeth, who are at home watching with their new baby. And uh, big brother Raf also slid. Sammy, just 20 years old, former sport weightlifting and the youngest uncle on tour, I think. World Cup best of 13th on his debut in Innsbruck last year. This is only his fourth World Cup start. 5.25 getaway, 22nd in the field. Gets a little much at corner zero, gets pushed away to the side by corner one. So Sammy needs a really good slide here to fight his way into the field. had an Austrian medalist here in the men's game in 14, 15 years at least. Not sure when the last Austrian medalist here might have been, could well have been Christian Auer, or maybe one of our coaches, Andy Schmidt, or Mickey Grunberger, who's working here for the IBSF. 23rd place on the splits. Sammy Myers not going to get a second heat here. And at the line, 23rd it is, with a 58-21. So his race is done. Heads next week with everybody else to La Plania in France. Very different natured track. We'll see what he makes of that one. Not sure what his experience is at La Plania. There's been very little racing there recently of any category. It's a little low maybe in 11 then. He's steering hard. Look at the legs working there. Not the tallest of our athletes either, so he's pushing a heavier sled than quite a few of them. He doesn't have that leverage with the long legs out the back. Has to work a little harder. Next up, Great Britain's Craig Thompson. Fifth World Cup start for the 27-year-old soccer player from Swindon. Three of his four World Cup starts have been in Lake Placid, including the first two of this season. 4.88, that's a blinding start. Second fastest, only 100 behind Sun Bin Yun. Now, how much of that precious speed can he carry down the track? Had a little drift of zero, but so did Yun. Second fastest start, he's fourth place at the moment. 
Oh, gets nodged away. You saw a big gouge in the wall there as well. Has to really steer hard to control it. All sorts of trouble coming down into the Kreisel. Was ninth coming into the Kreisel, 18th coming off it. And all of that speed is gone. It's just a little late with the steers from corner five on down. Track is very different from what he was used to in training, I think, and that's really showing. And he, second fastest start, I'm not sure he's going to make the field, he doesn't, behind Manuel Schwerzer. And that was really two races there, wasn't there? There was the one before he lay down and the one after corner zero. Well, when you've got that speed, like Alexander Chechikov when he started, you will always have a weapon in your arsenal, and it's learning to handle it that takes the time. There's the big gouges in the wall from the front and the back bunks. And again here, very late height. The steers all just a fraction mistimed. It's like missing your swing as a golfer. Doesn't have to be a little off to be a lot off. So Jerry Rice in 15th currently. But Craig Thompson out of the field. Next up, Canada's Kevin Boyer, 26-year-old freelance journalist and former hockey and baseball player. Jane Channel yelling him off at the top. I think it probably was. She'll be racing later for Canada, 5-12. Twelfth here two years ago, Boyer. Fourteenth here last year. World Cup best of tenth. And off a nineteenth fastest start. I think his race is going a little bit in the opposite direction to the one we've just seen from Craig Thompson, who started gangbusters and the time ebbed away. As soon as I say that, Kevin Boyer making mistakes down into the Kreisel, and now it's really not helping. 18th fastest, coming out of corner five. He's now out to 20th on the split times. Unless he finds some real speed and he's not, he's rattling all over the place down through the labyrinth. Dives low through the final corner. Scorpions across the line. He's in at the moment, 57-84. I'm not sure that's necessarily going to be enough. He bumps out Manuel Schwerzer of Italy. Andrew Blaser remains in 20th place. Kevin Boyer in 19th. So Boyer, late height here. You can see a big knee steer. A leg coming up and again hits the wall hard. And it's damage limitation all the way. That scorpion as he gets thrown up the final corner. Just dive low all the way through the zeal curve, trying to save distance and a few hundreds. Next up from Italy, a World Cup debutante, 20 years old from Tricero, which is between Milano and Torino. This is Amadeo Bagnes. One Europa Cup race here. He has had eight races ever had a 493 getaway i was going to say that of his eight races the last one europa cup race he won in Königsee, bavaria in december and with a start like that that's not a surprise six fastest starter in the field so how far does he carry this speed down this is looking like a very nice run from Amadeo Banyas at the moment. He's going to make the cut by some margin. He is still in the top 10. Looking good. Heads up a little bit. He doesn't really know the track as much as a lot of the others. And that's not helping him in terms of speed because as you pull the head up to see where you're going to get the lines, your shoulders come up, bigger frontal area, but it's not enough to undo him. He's going to be well in the race, 57-21. Congratulations. Welcome to World Cup sliding. Amadeo Banias, 20 years old. The Italians have a talent on their hands. 12th out of 26 sleds so far. That's a great slide from Amadeo Bagnis. 
We've got Little at corner zero, but who hasn't? Little skid on the way out. See those big rudders, the toes just touching the ground to straighten it up. Look, he allows it to come down low in 11. He feels it, doesn't he? Look, he's not panicking anywhere. No panic steers. He knows how to feel those pressures. Great stuff. So Minyun, Jisoo Kim, Martin Stukur, still the top three. Now we're fighting for places in the field. Our 27 starter of 30 today is Florian Auer of Austria, 25-year-old from Innsbruck. Last year, 12th place. That was his best on this track. His World Cup best, ninth place in San Moritz. This is his 22nd World Cup start, 5.08 getaway. The 5.08 is the 18th fastest start, so he needs to drive himself into the race from here on in. On the bubble at the moment is Kevin Boyer. Andrew Blaser was bounced out by the Italian rookie Amadeo Bagnes. And Florian Auer in 18th place on the splits as he gets to the Kreisel. Good looking Kreisel. Good exit as well. That's really important. Sets you up for the second half of the track. And now, nice clean exit off nine. And here we go. The 11 to 12 changeover. That was nice and smooth as well, but he's leaking time. 20th place at the line he's in. 57-64. It's a real dog-eat-dog -dog world. And he's in ahead of Vladislav Heriskevich. But Kevin Boyer of Canada was only in for two sleds. And he is now on the sidelines. Vladislav Heriskevich is on the bubble. And Florian Auer with Austin Florian just ahead of him. The two Florians are going to be right in the danger zone as well. 3 sleds to go. Bottom 3 of our top 20 are not safe. Alex Hansen in 17th will make the field. Well, another Canadian next up. This is Carl Murray, 30-year-old from Calgary, former 400-meter runner. Fifth World Cup start. He has not made the cut yet. His best result, 22nd in Calgary towards the end of last season. I wonder whether we will get the chance to go back to the Calgary track. 5.08 gets a lot of corner one. Well, we've just seen Florian Auer start 5.08 and make it into the field. But Auer grew up on these tracks and Murray grew up in North America. So he may not have the knowledge to allow him to get in. Still holding on to that 18th place. But one tiny flinch here in the wrong place can spell disaster. Big pressures in the Kreisel, gets a good exit though. Lots of legs flailing around behind, not exactly what you'd call the purest style. And he's dropped from 17th to 20th on the splits. And he is reacting now, he's driving the sled a little less than the sled is driving him. 21st place at the line. He really shortcuts the final corner. Doesn't make enough time up, though. 57-85, 22nd at the line. Behind teammate Kevin Boyer. Vladislav Heriskevich breathes again. Two more sleds to go. So now 18th place, Austin Florian will get a second heat. Florian Auer, Vladislav Heriskevich a 19th and 20th. Pretty decent start, 5.08. Gets loaded nicely. Spur still kicking people a little late. Over onto corner zero. Two sleds to go and a World Cup debutante next up. And when I checked the facts, I thought that can't be right, but it is. We've met Bren Doyle twice at the World Championships, but he has never started a World Cup race before now. Now, fellow Irishman, Brendan Doyle, 34 years old from Dublin. He's done a lot of North America's Cup and before that, European track racing. But now he intends to make all of the European World Cup races. Got a lot of corner zero off that 5.17 start. 
former Dublin policeman. Now combines his athletic sliding with uh, working with people with mental health issues. Competed in the last couple of world championships for Ireland. It's been a long time since we've had regular Irish competitors, either in bobsleigh or in skeleton. 27th at the start, still 27th on the splits. You can hear the chin piece of the helmet dragging on the ice in several places, keeping his head down low. You just got to trust the feeling a lot of the time in these sleds. And Brenda Doyle across the line, 29th place, 58-33. So he will join currently eight others on the sidelines, nine others in one more sled as we cut our field of 30 to the fastest, 20 for the second and deciding heat here. We've got an awful lot of corner zero, so that pressure speed from the start, a lot of that was bumped away up the wall. A little high exit. Puts him late onto the cryos. He's trying to hold a middle line all the way through. And then in 11, high early pressure. Centrifugal force drops you and then sends you back up again. Final slider on the ice, Switzerland's Ronald Alderset. While Brendan Doyle has now one World Cup start under his belt. This is the 34th for Ronnie. 30 year old mechanical engineer and consultant. 509 getaway. Well, that's in the top 20. Eighteenth last year on the track in Winterberg. That's his best Winterberg result. In fact, that was the only time he made the cut in three World Cup starts in Winterberg. At the moment, of a 20-second start. He is not yet in the race. It is him or Vladislav Hereskevich. Don't forget, Vlad popped the groove at the start. Still started 5.30. But Ronald Alderset of Switzerland is not going to make it. From 24th to 23rd, 78 miles an hour at the bottom, should be 80. And 25th place finish, 57.87. So he joins 10, or he becomes one of the 10 on the sidelines for the second heat. And Vladislav Hereskevich, who must have thought his race was over the moment the sled popped the groove a dozen steps into the run, survives in 20th place. Here again in turn 11, Ronnie burying his head, knows where he's going. He's happy with the way the sled trajectory is going. Just a little late flop there. Again, the speed was gradually going away all the way down the track. And that sort of leads you to think, OK, either the runner selection was less than ideal for the conditions. You can't always be spot on. Or the way he'd set up the rock gave him a little too much control, too much friction. Well, the top of the pile is our winner from two years ago, Son Bin Yun of Korea, one of only four men to win on this track in the last 14 seasons, three of whom are competing with uh, us this weekend. Yun, Martin Stukos, and Alexander Chechikov. Between them, they've won the last three races. Between them, they've won 13 of the last 14. So Sun Bin Yuna Korea is our World Cup leader. Jisoo Kim, his teammate in second. Martin Stukos is in third, but only two hundreds ahead of Alexander Gassner, only three hundreds ahead of Axel Junk, only five hundred ahead of Felix Keisinger. So first, two tenths clear, and second, another five hundreds ahead of Dukos. The battle might be on for the podium spots, but Sun Bin Yung with a big advantage. And from Kevin Boyer on down, the remaining 10 sliders do not go through and they will join us and you watching the second heat. We will be back with the action at 11.45 local, 10.45 GMT, wherever you are. Join us then, please, from me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew here. For now, it's our Venus N. We'll see you at 11.45 for heat two of the men's skeletons.